I'm Jim, and today we're going to continue our series on uh, curve fitting or regression with um, MATLAB. This time we're going to talk about using the backslash operator, a little bit about how it works. I'll give you an example, and this one I think is going to be reasonably short. Now, we're going to, in the example, we're going to reuse that, uh, that train data or pseudo train data that we used last time uh, just for continuity. So this is the data we had. If you recall from the previous video, uh, we had trains that had different top speeds, you know, from 30 to 50 miles an hour. And we had collected data, historical data on the time it took the trains to get from Detroit to Chicago. And we used the polyfit command to fit a line to that data. Uh, initially, we just used you know time as some polynomial and we just looked at second and third order uh, we determined that was stupid because this is the equation equation we really want to the form of the equation we really want so we improved the poly, poly fit polyval process to fit this equation that's a big improvement but we still had the issue with this term right here which doesn't belong you know so today we'll look at using the backslash operator to give us exactly the equation we want to fit. So we just fit the one coefficient to essentially replace this distance term here. Uh, we'll go on. So the backslash is the matrix left divide operator. Um, so A backslash B is the matrix division of A into B, which is essentially the same as the inverse of A times B, um, you know, if you're doing matrix operations. But for our curve fitting and regression purposes, uh, the way it works is, is that we can come up with an X equal to A backslash B um, from a couple of data sets that gives you the best fit values for X in a le from least squares perspective for the equation of b equals a times x, where b would be our the thing we want to find, you know, like the time to get to Chicago in our previous data. Uh, a is some coefficient, and x is some independent variable or some modification of an independent variable. And we can be pretty general about these. So just to kind of walk through it before we get to our example, uh, let's assume that I have done some experiments. I've got n samples that I've taken. There are two independent variables, two inputs. Uh, let's pretend that they're temperature and time. I've got some chemical reaction here, and I'm doing a whole bunch of tests where I measure the, at different temperatures and time, various combinations of temperature to time. And uh, what I'm measuring as an output is a dependent variable. Um, we'll say that's the amount of precipitate, okay? So what I want to do is come up with an equation that, that uses these two independent variables and gives me a prediction of that dependent variable. So we'll assume for a moment that it's a linear system. Uh, so I want to find the coefficients a1 and a2 such that a1 times our time plus a2 times our temperature gives us the best estimate of the amount of precipitate. Precipitate. If I put that in matrix form, it, it looks like this, okay, where I have column vectors for each of my independent variables. I have a column vector of my state level or, or dependent variable. And to come up with A1 and A2, I use the backslash operator in this form, where I have my columns of independent variables or trans uh, modifications of the independent variables. You know, this could be the inverse of time. It could be the sine of time, the log of time, whatever, you know, put in whatever I need to put in there. Backslash, and then our dependent variables, and we will get the values of our coefficients, two of them in this case, because I have two independent 
two states, I should say, two inputs to my equation. Um, I get those two, and the, the, the values that give me that best least squares fit, okay? So our particular problem we're going to solve here, given our train data, find the value of A that best fits this equation. We want time equals some constant divided by the speed. So we will find our coefficient using taking the inverse of the speeds backslash time. And I'll, where speed and time are column vectors with the data from, from this chart that we used before. Okay, And into MATLAB already created the data in MATLAB, so I have my column of speed, my column of time, and let me go back to my thing. I'm going to create a variable I'm going to call states. I don't have to do this step, but I'm going to because it's kind of the way to put things together when we get more complex. So I'm going to create this states, which is basically just a column speed is a column vector so I'm going to, states is just going to be the inverse of the speed in a column vector and then I can use the backslash operator directly and I get a coefficient of 349.2970 you can see it over here on the right I hope what that means is that essentially we can use this coefficient value divided by any particular speed and we will get an estimate of the time to go from Detroit to Chicago. So if I want to figure out if we had a train that had a top speed of 48 miles an hour, I just divide that coefficient by 48, and I get time 48 of 7.27 hours. Like I did before, I'm going to create a line, a set of values for the x values run from 30 to 50, uh, just so I get a bunch of points for plotting, I'm going to take that coefficient divided by that set of values to get my y values, uh, set up a graph, I'll plot the original data, I'll plot my x, x, y, y, which are the expected values from my regression, and I'll plot the averages here. This is essentially the same plot we did last time. And there it is. Uh, we could go. I'll go back in a minute and compare it to some of the others. Um, again, I can calculate the average time at 50, which is 6.98 hours. I know I'm going kind of fast, but we've done this a couple times already. Evaluate selection. I can pr extrapolate. Still risky. I'm extrapolating out to 70, out to 75 miles an hour, and I get 4.6. I can draw the, um, you know, the expected values from 30 to 80 instead of just 30 to 50 to see what it looks like when we extra extrapolate. Um, that's not too bad. You know, again, it's a decent fit. That's extrapolated. This is not extrapolated. And let's let's go back to our old files here. Uh, train inverse data curve fit. This is the one where we used the poly, poly fit to fit a line, but this has, of course, the extra um, constant at the end. I did not want to do that. Okay, so there's the comparison of the polyfit to the inverse. Okay, uh, which one's better? Yeah, who can say? You know, uh, here's the two values. This is polyfit, which had that extra, extra um, constant coefficient, and this is the backslash operator. They're not identical. Um, I'm going to have a little more confidence in this equation with the backslash because it doesn't have that. Um, let me go back here. Yeah, it doesn't have this extra co constant that the 
doesn't fit our physics. Our physics does not have this constant thrown into it. So I, I, I feel better about this equation here, which matches the form exactly. Okay, so that's where we're at. Um, hopefully I didn't, I know I went through that fairly quickly, but once you get the idea that the backslash operator is just finding those coefficients for you and you can, wrong one, and you can be pretty arbitrary about what you put in here in terms of columns of independent variables. Uh, so you can do some pretty wacky things. And we'll come back with one more video on fitting a surface with multiple inputs, and I'll give you a good example of that. But this, in the meantime, should kind of give you the basics. And as always, I'll put these files up on uh, GitHub. So if, if you want to play with them yourself and explore it, you're welcome. Okay, so I hope you found that useful, and I'll catch you on the flip side.